Hi Vinyl community, John back again. Um, so this is a continuation of uh, the Crystal Collection. Uh, in the first video I showed mainly kind of acoustic -y kind of um, folky records. The next one I did was more focused on prog. Um, I showed this, which is what we're spinning now. Refugee. I hadn't. I don't think I played it when I showed it, but uh, it's fantastic. It's a really good record. It's everything you could want in a progressive rock record. Um, <clears throat> and this this video is going to be focused mainly on the more sort of hard rock records that I got from Ken. Um, the, so I'm going to press on and show what I've collected here from the stacks that I got from Ken. Um, first of all, I'm going to show this. This is UFO. Um, it's an album called Making Contact. So this came out in oh, early 80s, I think. 83, 82. Um, it's the first UFO album um, that Pete Way doesn't appear on. Pete Way is the, the original sort of uh, bass player from UFO. Um, he is someone that was a huge influence on Steve Harris um, in uh, Iron Maiden. Uh, but he left. He left. UFO at this point because he didn't like the commercial direction they were going in, I think. Um, he went on to I think, play with uh, Fast Eddie Clark in um, Fast Boy, uh, at least tour with them anyway. Um, but uh, the record, I would say it's quite typical of its time. Um, yeah, perhaps a little bit more of a sort of softer commercial approach to things. Um, it's not my favourite by them, put it that way. Good to have it because I didn't have it before. Um, but interestingly, the, the, the next one I'm going to show, also from Ken's collection, uh, is the follow up album. Now, apparently, when they were on tour with this album, they had a disastrous tour and they disbanded, they split up completely. Um, and uh, Phil Moog went. Uh, or Phil Mogg, I don't know how you pronounce his name. He went to America and uh, less than two years after they'd split up, he basically reformed the band uh, with a whole bunch of different people. So interestingly, <coughs> the follow-up album to this, you can't really see the... There's one band playing on this album a couple of years later, there's another band playing uh, on the next one. Um, so this one is because of you know the the move to America, and by this time it was '85. Um, you've got a much more of a sort of typical um, sounding mid to late '80s sound on this. It's it's harder, it's harder, harder rock than that last one, but it's um, what would I say? It's sort of harder, crunchier sound, but there's a lot more keyboards, you know, this sort of 80s style um, synthesizer type stuff that they had in rock in those days. Probably sounded great at the time, it just sounds dated now. Um, yeah, it's not a bad, it's not a bad record. Um, certainly not their best either. And I think it's quite telling because here in this picture, they've got so much more you know, bigger hair. Um, Phil Mogg's gone out and gathered himself a bunch of pretty boys to play. Uh, much in the way that um, David Coverdale did with White Snake shortly after that. Okay, uh, Uriah Heep. High and Mighty. This is their ninth studio album. Um, quite an interesting looking cover there. Um, I think by now they'd passed their peak, uh, Uriah Heep. Um, yeah, it's just on the uh, Warner Bros. Records. Uh, 
Um, yeah, it's one I didn't have. Um, good to have it. Beautiful condition. Um, interesting that it came out in '76. Um, I always think of '76 as being sort of the year that punk exploded in London um, and what was going on. So I listened to this kind of stuff with those ears, you know. Um, I guess it's kind of a bit. Yeah, at the time it probably sounded a bit dull, um, but it sort of stayed. Um, and I'm also going to show this one. I got this one from Ken too. Um, so this is a Australian release compilation, a double album. Got a picture on the gatefold. It says the greatest rock in the world. Uh, Airs Rock. Uh, so it's basically a compilation of tracks from their first four, five, six albums, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's never been reissued. Um, so I'm quite happy to have that. It's uh, an unusual little sort of collecting thing. Um, next one I'm going to show is Terraplane. So Terraplane. They are the band that would go on to become Thunder, the British rock band Thunder. Um, I think they, Terraplane, they struggled as a band um, in the mid 80s. Um, didn't really get off the ground. I think they, uh, for whatever reason, they didn't have uh, much success with their sound or whatever, I don't know. Um, and, you know I'll just notes on the back here. Uh, one of the extra musicians play is Jules Holland, who played organ on one of the tracks. Um, but what happened, yeah, uh, they released another album after this and it didn't do very well either and they kind of, sort of I think, got ready to throw the towel in. But then um, they met up with Andy Taylor uh, from Duran Duran and he uh, introduced them to the harder sounds and they made an album called Backstreet Symphony uh, with a new name called Thunder and uh, they become very big news all of a sudden. So yeah, it's quite fun to have that. I've never really actually heard Terraplane before. Uh, a compilation of Slade hits. Um, yeah, just uh, hits from there basically there first uh, five or six albums. Um, I don't know. I kind of like Slade in small doses. I don't know if I could listen to a whole record. But no, no not, not a bad thing to have. Lovely condition as well. Um, this is a nice one, Motorhead. It's their third album, Bomber. Um, while they were a three piece. Fast Eddie Clark. Phil Taylor, Lemmy. Um, I don't, yeah, I, I, I really like Motorhead and it's on bronze, so I'm going to show you the label. Um, I really like Motorhead, just don't have many of their albums on record. Uh, I've got them all on CD. Um, but, uh, so that's, that's lovely to have. And then this last record I'm going to show um, is really quite, I've special. really come to, uh, to like this a lot. Um, so, cut long story short, 1985, um, I was, I think it was 85, I was watching Live Aid, I was a teenager, into Duran Duran and things at the time, really looking forward to uh, the power station coming on. Um, eventually they came on, but something was odd, what's wrong, you know, where is uh, Robert Palmer, he wasn't there, he said they had some other guy singing. Um, someone called Michael DeBarris and uh, it turned out that uh, that's who this is. I'd never heard of him before uh, and although I've known of him since uh, Live Aid, I've never known what he does or, or anything like that, it never really crossed my mind because he kind of vanished. He wasn't in Power Station for very long. Um, but when I went to collect these records from Ken, this is one of the ones that he pulled out and said, oh that's a really good one. I didn't think much of it. He said it was interesting because it's on the Swan Song label. 
So yeah, it's one of the few bands that were on Led Zeppelin's um, Swan Song label. I think this is fun, it says for Elvis there. <laughs> um, and I thought, well, that, that's, that's interesting, but it doesn't necessarily make them very good. I listened to it a few times, and we think about it. But then um, I put it on, and it was playing while I was working. And um, after a while, you know, the penny dropped, and it was like, wow, this is actually quite good. That's a good song, and well, that's a good song. And then after a while, was, like the whole album was just really, really good. Um, since I kind of discovered that about I don't know, sometime over the weekend, uh, before the weekend, I think it's, it, this hasn't really left my turntable. It's just been going round and round and round. It's such a really, really good record. Um, so I read up about them, and um, so apparently this is the second album. And quite interestingly, although it gets a fair amount of praise um, from people and critics, it uh, they, uh, they often say things like it's not quite as good as the first one. Um, the first album by them. Now, they only made two, so this is the second and last album. But it's brilliant, it's really, really good. Um, and I think straight away I felt I've got to have that first record. So I looked online, couldn't find it anywhere. Um, Amazon doesn't exist, you know. It's, you know, I want to get it on record. Um, the only place I could find it was on um, Discogs. So uh, I'd done something that I'd never done before, and as I ordered it. <clears throat> the first album um, came this morning. I've only sort of tentatively looked at it, peeked at it. But uh, so here is the first album by Detective. Um, this apparently is supposed to be very, very good. Um, this is, <laughs> I think this is brilliant. I will go so far as to say that this is possibly the best record I've heard in a few years. Um, and I'll tell you what I like about it. Um, because it's on the Swan Song label and there's a connection here with Led Zeppelin, there is a definite sort of element of Zeppelin involved in the record. Um, that's not to mean that they're sort of Zeppelin clones, because there's lots of those out there, um, far from it. Uh, but I would say that they're sort of Zeppelin-esque, at least on this record anyway. Um, and there's also a little twinge of um, the faces in there too, if you can imagine that. And this guy, Michael DeBarris, has got such a really good, strong singing voice. Um, yeah, he's sort of, for some reason, is very sort of underestimated. Um, but everyone says, you know, it's not as good as the first one. So I thought, well, if I like this one, if I rate this one so highly, then I'm going to really, really like this one. And uh, yeah, I got myself a nice copy of Discogs. First time I've ever done that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. The main difference, I think, between this and the second one um, is that um, apparently Jimmy Page sat in on the sessions while they were making this, or sort of, you know, to give guidance and support, I suppose. Um, whereas this one, he wasn't there. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm looking forward to listening to this. Um, yeah, I, I'm really happy to be able to kind of tell everybody about this. I've never heard of them before. Um, I'm really looking forward to giving this a spin. I'll come back to you <laughs> sometime soon and, and let you know how good it was or is. Um, all right, well, okay, that's the records I'm going to show on this one, the Crystal Collection, part three or four. Um, thanks very much. Uh, look out for my next video. Bye.